Sarah, everybody. Today we're going to be talking about this week's project, or one of this week's projects. Um, here is the example I made for this project. Um, let me get my notes here. So, if you haven't watched the PowerPoint from Monday, you need to go back and watch that. It's a video of me talking about the color wheel. It will help you do this project. Um, but if you've already watched that, good job. This project is going to be based off of the slide in that PowerPoint called Complementary Colors. So complementary colors are colors that are across from each other on the color wheel. They're gonna look really bright when you place them next to each other. If you mix them together, it'll make brown. But if you put them next to one another, it'll be super bright. All right, um, I just wanna check for your understanding about which colors go together um, that makes them complementary colors. All right, and these colors will be the same for everybody. Nobody will have different colors on their paper. So here are the color combinations I want you to use. All right, so blue and orange, complementary, red and green, and purple and yellow. These are the three complementary color combinations that we're gonna be using. Um, and if you had a color wheel, you would see that if you draw a straight line between blue and across, straight across from it would be orange. Same with all the other ones. All right, so here's my example, and I'm about to show you how to do this. So if you look at my paper here, in this first section, I have the complementary color combination of blue and orange. So I did blue for the background and orange for the fish and the bubbles. Middle section, red and green. If you look at my paper again, red and green. And then last section is yellow and purple. It's okay if this isn't the most realistic thing in the world. Obviously, this isn't realistic. No fish is orange on top, red in the middle, and then yellow down here. And definitely no bubbles are orange. It's okay. You kind of want this to look a little bit more abstract. Um, but we'll get into that a little bit more here in a minute. So I'm going to show you how to do this. So grab a piece of paper. If you only have lined paper, that's fine, but I would definitely recommend using blank paper if you have some. Um, so what you're gonna do next is you wanna divide this paper into three sections. You can do this several different ways. You don't have to do it like the way I did it. I did my lines diagonally. If you don't like how that looks, that's fine. Um, maybe you wanna do straight lines like this. One, two, if you wanna do that and draw whatever you wanna draw here in the middle. And I'm gonna go over here in a moment what you can and cannot draw for this project. If you wanna draw your subject matter here in the middle, that's fine. Um, if you wanna turn it vertically like this, you can have it like that. Um, I'm fine with you doing it this way. If you wanna do like a lawn going this way and a lawn going this way, that's fine too. I'm fine with that or I'm fine if you do it this way. But basically, you don't want any more than three sections on your paper. And they all need to be about the equal size. So I'll keep it like this, um, just for demonstration. Uh, so I'm just gonna draw something really quick here in the middle. I'll just draw like a really quick flower. So I'm gonna get my flower on here. There we go, okay. So now I have my drawing. Hey, I'm recording right now. Sorry. All right, so I have my flower here in the middle and I have my paper into three different sections. And so what you're gonna do is you would color each section depending on the co complementary color combo that you're trying to use. So let me just label those for you real quick. So in one section you would use blue and orange and this one you might use yellow and purple. And in this section you might use red and green. If you wanna do like me and leave the lines a little more chunky with some white in the middle, I'm fine with that. You don't have to do that. If you just wanna leave it like this, you can do that too. Um, I just kinda liked the way that looked, but you don't have to do it that way. But if you did want to, you would just come up here and draw a second line and leave that part white. 
and erase all the lines here in the middle where your picture comes into that. Um, but make sure you know ahead of time where each color combination is going to go, and then you color it in. Um, one note I would like to make is if you look back at my fish picture, you can see here that I started coloring my fish orange and then I did my background blue, but I wanted something for his gills here and I didn't want to use blue and I didn't want to use this orange. What I did, I used the same color orange and just bared down harder. So if you kind of want like a different color, if you're kind of running out of options, bear down harder with your pencil and that's a complimentary color too. It's still orange, it's just darker orange than this. Same with blue. Um, if I wanted to kind of come out here and do this, look, it kind of looks like a different shade of blue because it's a little darker. So if you bear down harder with your pencil, it'll give you a whole other shade to work with. So then you kind of have four shades to work with instead of just the two. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, let me see what else I had to talk about. All right, so I am gonna be talking about subjects I do not allow. This, sorry for the bell. Sorry, there's a lot of interruptions in this video. Um, this I go by in class as well. Um, so this isn't just an online thing. When you come to my class, when school gets back in, these rules will still apply. So subjects, I don't want you to draw. You do not have to draw a fish. I wish I would have made a sign that says that, but you do not have to draw a fish. You can draw a bunch of other things. I just draw fish because I like to draw fish, but if you don't like to draw fish, there's a ton of other stuff you can draw. But do not draw these things. So don't draw sh simple shapes. No stars, hearts, circles, squares, anything like that. You guys are just more creative than that. I think you can put more effort behind something that you draw, um, something a little bit more unique and cool. Um, no cartoon characters that you did not invent. So no SpongeBob, no Peppa Pig, no Mario, anything like that, that you didn't invent, please don't draw it. Um, I wanna see what you can create and what you can come up with. I already know someone else invented Mario and drew SpongeBob. They're doing their own thing. I wanna see what you can do. So no cartoon characters that already exist. That's usually kind of a hard one for people because these things are kind of easy to draw a lot of the times um, and a lot of fun to draw, but for my projects, that's, an, that's a big no-no, so don't do those. Just make sure you follow school guidelines. We all know what those things are. Um, no blood, no weapons or anything like that, please. Um, and I think that is about it as far as things I won't let people draw. If you have a question about something that you want to draw and you're not sure, just send me an email and I'll let you know if I'm okay with it or not. Um, here's some things you can draw. So there's a lot more, so things you can draw. Um, animals, all different types of animals. Look, I drew a fish, see? So you can do an animal, a plant, maybe a, a landscape, I'm fine with that. You don't have to do it like this picture where it's just here in the middle. If you wanna take up the whole thing and do a whole landscape and then break it up, I'm fine with that. Vehicles, planes, trains cars, all of it. You can do objects, places, you can do your house, you can draw people. I'm fine with any of that. If you draw people though, um, try to do it in your own style again. Don't be like copying anybody else's work. Um, do your own thing. Hopefully that answered your questions of what you can draw. And then lastly, we're gonna be going over point deductions. So points will be deducted for these things. Coloring in opposite directions. So we've already talked about that a bunch. Please, y'all, look at my picture. Once you decide which way you're gonna color, look right here. I didn't start going this way all of a sudden. I stayed vertical the whole time. This one's a little different, but it's still going vertical. Even though this way it's kind of slanting a little bit, it's still going the same direction. Um, incorrect complementary colors. If you just color it all whatever colors you want, that's really this whole point of this assessment. So you're gonna get big time points off if you just do whatever colors you want. If the image doesn't follow the guidelines, if you just put a big star on there or a big heart or a big like picture of SpongeBob, that'll be points off um, as well as poor craftsmanship, which is just things like coloring outside of the lines, not uh, 
having a nice neat paper if your paper's all crumpled up. I've had a few of those submitted already. I do take off points for your paper being super crumpled. Um, just take care of your work, okay? Um, here's my final look at my example. I feel like that's more helpful than anything. Um, just take a look at it. If you have any questions about what you're gonna draw, um, anything like that, please let me know. I think that's all I have for you today. If you don't have colored pencils, again, you can use crayons, you can use markers. Uh, if you have enough highlighters, I'm not sure if there's a highlighter for all these colors, but if you do have that, I'm fine with that. Sharpies are fine. Use whatever you have. Please don't go out and buy anything new. Please just use what you have. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I look forward to seeing what you create.